Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Good morning Miss. So hari ni kita akan um, continue on chapter 9, 9.0 carbonyl compounds. Okay kalau awak tengok sebelum ni awak dah belajar 8 chapter. So chapter 9 ni adalah dia punya um, sambungan dan mungkin awak akan jumpa the same reactions again. Okay, cuma ni kita start daripada carbonyl compound. Okay, what is this carbonyl compound? So there are two types of compound that we call them got carbonyl group. They are aldehyde with this um, structural formula. Kita ada C yang paling penting, C double bond O. The C double bond O attached to it, they must have at least one hydrogen. Kalau ada one hydrogen, they are considered aldehyde. Kalau dia ada two hydrogen pun, dia kira aldehyde. Kalau kita tulis dalam bentuk kondens, dia punya cara tulis adalah carbon lepas tu kita ada alkyl group ni kalau ada and then HO, dia bukannya OH. Kalau awak tulis COH, itu dikira sebagai um, uh, apa ni kita panggil tu? Alkohol. Okay, tapi sebab C double bond O, kita tak ada kita hanya ada tiga benda je keliling dia. Jadi jadi tak cukup pula lah kalau awak tulis COH lepas tu tak ada satu lagi H, dikira salah lah. Okey lagi satu adalah ketone. Ketone adalah C double bond O, directly attached to it is car, uh, alkyl group. So dua-dua kena ada carbon sebelah, carbon double bond O. So kita ada COR, ni cara tulis kalau dalam condensed structure. Okey so kat mana carbonylnya? Dekat C double bond O sahaja. Right. Okay, ini adalah untuk ahli fatih, ahli hak and ketone. So, untuk this chapter, kita akan cover for these three parts. The first one, we have nomenclature of carbonyl compound. So, kita akan tukar dekat part in dengan al untuk aldehyde. Kalau untuk ketone jadi on. Okay, lepas tu, the second part, we have preparations of carbonyl compound. How are we going to make this carbonyl compound? And lastly, we have chemical properties of the carbonyl compound. What kind of reactions taking place in this uh, carbonyl compound? Okay, so kita start dengan nomenclature dulu. Sebelum kita nak start nomenclature, saya nak ingatkan these are the suffix priorities. At the moment, we are at this aldehyde and ketone. Means if you have any other functional group um, present in your compound other um, below than this uh, priority daripada aldehyde dengan ketone, kita akan letakkan dia orang sebagai prefix. Ingat substituents, it can be either prefix or suffix. Okay, so naming aldehyde, kita ada dua part eh, naming aldehyde dan naming ketone. Untuk naming aldehyde, the parent chain must contain the CHO group and the CHO carbon is numbered as carbon number one. Maksud dia, Okay, kita ada parent chain yang paling panjang tu dan kita kena make sure yang this carbon bearing the O attached to it is hydrogen adalah pada carbon pertama. Kenapa kita kena letak dekat carbon pertama? Apa yang buatkan dia tak boleh berada di carbon kedua dan seterusnya? Because the double bond O is at the end. Okay, double bond O is at the end betul sebab satu lagi dia attached tu H. Ha, dia attach to H. H adalah duplet jadi H tak boleh duduk tengah. Kalau dia dah start duduk tengah takkan ada H pada C double bond O dia. Sebab itulah aldehyde dia hanya ada pada hujung ke hujung. Macam sebelum ni alkohol kita uh, macam hari tu awak tengok kalau straight line tiga turun bawah ada satu lagi empat. Just because of this OH dia can form positional isomers jadi sebab tu kita boleh ambil the longest parent chain of four instead of three. Tapi kalau awak ada aldehyde dan alkohol dalam compound yang sama dan aldehyde dia punya paling panjang hanyalah tiga instead of lima or empat, awak kena go for aldehyde punya carbon chain uh, numbering. So awak tak boleh ambil yang paling panjang lah lima. So parent chain ni akan berubah lah ikut keperluan group ni. Kalau dia lah paling tinggi priority. Okay so if we have one carbon, uh, one only one carbon in your aldehyde, what do we call this compound? Methanol. Methanol. Kita akan ambil methane, tukar dengan E tu jadi al. Ni untuk alifatik aldehyde. So methanol, ethanol, 
uh, propanal, okay. So untuk aldehyde boleh start dengan satu carbon sebab at least awak ada carbon bearing the double bond O ada H. Okay, so nama dia adalah metanal dan you need to know the common name for this metanal which is formaldehyde. Okay, next one. If we have two carbons, okay, the two carbon, the numbering will start from the carbon double bond O. What is the name according to the impact? If you change the ethane to become? Ethanol. Ethanol. So untuk common name pula, nama dia akan jadi acetaldehyde. This is uh, kalau kita tengok hari tu dalam chapter 7, we have one of the nucleophile called acetate ion. So the acetate ion when you have C the one O, O minus attached to it is the CH3. Basically aceto group is this part. This is aceto group. So kalau dia adalah aldehyde, aceto aldehyde. So gabung acetaldehyde. Okay, sebab nanti awak jumpa lagi acetic acid. So sama juga. Dia adalah common name. Okay, this one. You are given this compound. Look for the longest carbon chain. Tell me how many carbons that makes up the parent chain. Five. Five. Six. Okay, kita check eh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five juga. Mana right, tahu six? Bawah ni. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six tak boleh sebab apa kita cakap tadi, bila dalam satu compound, awak ada functional group. Okay. To bear in mind, kita akan prioritize functional group. Kak. But, uh, prioritize functional group pun kena depend juga pada functional group tu. Dia boleh digerakkan ke tengah atau ke tidak. Kalau dia boleh gerak ke tengah, yes, you always go for the parent chain, the longest one. Okay, maksudnya dia boleh jadi as substitute as prefix, uh, as substituent lah dia buat positional isomer. Tapi dalam kes aldehyde, sebab dia mesti ada carbon attached to hydrogen dan pada carbon yang sama, you ada double bond O, that makes this aldehyde can only be at the end of the chain. Jadi bila dia ada the end of the chain, the numberings kena start daripada carbon ni. Sebab tu dia cakap the CHO carbon is numbered as carbon number one even though the long, the possible longest parent chain can be six. Dalam six ni kita tak ada important functional group kan? Betul tak? Yang yeah. saya tak ada important functional group kan? Yeah. Ha, kita kena letakkan the preparing sekarang Mana-mana pun, kalau awak nak pilih paling panjang sekalipun awak Contohlah awak tak tahu dia boleh gerakkan ke tak Awak kena tengok, ada functional group, kena lalu functional group Kalau awak buat sini, awak tak lalu functional group tu Okay, so the numbering will start from here Okay, so jadi boleh tak tolong saya bagi nama compound ni Kalau ni carbon number one 2, 3, 4 and 5. At carbon number 2 and 4, we have um, alkyl group. Uh, antara number 2 and 4, siapa yang kita nak name dulu? 2 ethyl. 2. So here we got 2 carbon means 2 ethyl. Here at carbon number 4? 4 methyl. 4 methyl. And then what about your parent? Pentanal. Yeah, pentanal. Pentanal. Yes, pentana sebab lima karbon, pentin tukar E jadi al. Dia tak ada one ke two pentanal tak ada sebab emang dia at carbon number one sahaja. Jadi nama dia two ethyl, four methyl, pentanal. Dia tak dia lah common name. Common name hanya untuk certain compound sahaja. Dan awak kena tahu. So, so far kita dah tahu dua. Formaldehyde, acetaldehyde. Ni untuk aliphatic um, aldehyde. And then we have another case. When the CHO group which is the aldehyde is attached to a ring. Bila cakap ring dalam cyclic structure, the suffix will become carbaldehyde. Kalau dalam aliphatic yang straight chain, okay, aliphatic kena faham, aliphatic we have straight chain dan juga dalam ring. Kalau dalam aliphatic yang straight chain, kita hanya tukar E jadi al. Tapi kalau awak ada carbon chain awak comprise of ring, you are going to use carbaldehyde. Okay, penuh carbaldehyde, bukan lagi al. So let's say we have this compound. So this compound, we have this CHO group directly attached to a ring. And the numbering starts from here. Jadi kalau kita tahu ini cycloalkin apa kita panggil? Cyclo 
cyclohexin. Cyclohexin tapi sekarang ni sebab dia directly attached to this um, apa ni directly attached to this CHO group jadi kita kena panggil dia cyclo cyclohexin carbaldehyde Yes, cyclohexane carbaldehyde tak perlu tukar pun jadi ail. Dia tak payah pun cyclohexal carbaldehyde tak perlu. Sebab cyclohexane ni yang membuatkan dia jadi uh, dia ada compound tu sebab kalau kita ada CHO saja, salah lah tak cukup. Bond of carbon kena ada empat. Kalau C, double bond, O, H baru tiga. Jadi dia bukan laki dikira sebagai prefix. Okay, this is cyclohexane carbaldehyde. What about this one? This time we have another substituent CH3. Can this CH3 be the suffix? Siapa higher priority? Alkyl group or aldehyde? Aldehyde. Aldehyde. Jadi the numbering will start from the? Aldehyde. 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 So apa nama compound ni? Tadi kita dah try buat cyclohexane carbaldehyde means this one akan jadi prefix. Bila prefix kena tukarlah jadi al. Jadi apa nama dia? Two methyl cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Yes, two methyl cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Okay, boleh ikut lagi ni? Boleh ni. Okay, next case. The CHO has higher priority to other functional group except carboxylic acid and its derivative iaitu ester ataupun uh, amide. Okay, jadi kita tengok kat sini pula. Ni apa nama dia? You have these two all the, uh, functional group. So um, siapa lagi higher priority? Aldehyde or alcohol? Aldehyde. Aldehyde. What is the name of this compound? To cyclopentanol carbaldehyde. Eh, kenapa betul? To cyclopentanol buat macam tadi lah, macam yang tadi ni, yang ni, yang tu metal cyclohexane carbaldehyde sama juga yang ni. To hydroxy. Okay. Cyclo pentane carbaldehyde. Yes. To hydroxy cyclopentane carbaldehyde. This one. Okay. Kita ada sekarang, kita ada benzene pula. Benzene ni ring tak? Yes. Kita patut yeah. tak guna sama macam tadi? Tak. Kenapa tak? Dia ring tak? Yes. Dan dia asal ring kita akan guna juga uh, Hena. Yang ni nama dia? Okay. Uh -huh. Dia benzene. Mm -hmm. Betul lah. Dia ring. Kali ni pun ring juga tapi dia tak specify pun kena alifatik. Cuma tadi kes alifatik. Okay, yang ni nama dia? Yes. Benzene carbaldehyde. Yes, benzene carbaldehyde. Dia ada IUPAC name dia, uh, common name dia iaitu benzaldehyde. Okay, this group kita panggil benzal, benz. Yang ni adalah aldehyde. So, sambung benzaldehyde. So, dah berapa dah common name kena tahu? Tiga. Tiga, okay. good. Next one, kita nak masuk ketone. Untuk aldehyde kena tahu tiga uh, benda tu. And then ketone, we have the parent chain is the longest one that contains a ketone group and the numbering begins at the end nearer to C double bond O carbon. Dia adalah the uh, functional group isomers to aldehyde. Aldehyde dia hanya boleh hujung dengan hujung. Yang ketone pula kena tengah. Start pada dua dan ke tengah. Dia tak boleh hujung sebab syarat ketone C double bond O kena kepit dengan carbon. Okay, yang ni boleh awak check for the longest carbon chain. Asalkan dia lalu dekat the C double bond O. Okay, for this one, we have three carbons. So, when naming ketone, awak akan tukarkan the E become on, O and E. So, kalau um, boleh tak kita ada one carbon that makes up the ketone? Macam aldehyde tadi. Cannot. Cannot. Dua pun tak boleh. Dia at least kena tiga. So ketone start pada tiga carbon. So one, two, three. Nama compound ni apa? Propanon. Propanon. Okay. Common name dia adalah acetone. Again, this is the ketone part. This is the acetone group. So acetone. 
this one we have two uh, one two three four so the numbering will start from the right or from the left right 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 okay so what is the name of this compound butanol butanol do we need to put the number Kalau kita bawa ke sini, dia jadi sama kan? Kalau kita bawa ke sini, numbering start pada kiri pula. Jadi tak perlu tulislah. Just butanon. Tak perlu lagi. Untuk part carbon, tak perlu letak number lagi dalam naming. Okay? Okay, Miss. Okay, Miss. So, common name tak ada. Untuk this one pula. Okay. This is um, ketone in a ring. Okay. In a circuit structure. Jadi, nama dia simply tukar je. E dengan on. So, nama dia akan jadi... 2-methyl cyclopentanol. Yes, 2-methyl cyclopentanol. So untuk aldehyde sahaja bila attach to ring tak kisahlah alifatik ke aromatik, awak kena letak carbaldehyde. Ini untuk kita bezakan. Okay, this one. You have benzene directly attached to it is the ketone. CO. Tengok siapa yang dalam ni kita ada berapa functional group present? Dua. Kita ada satu, kita ada dua right? Yes, yes. Yang yes. mudia patutnya kalau kita kita prioritize this as the the parent chain Ada satu dua, dua carbon nama dia? Etanol. Etanol, directly attached to it we have? Phenyl. Phenyl and carbon number? One. Wine. Okay. So dia kena tengok juga sebab ini dah start dah chain. Dia dah start carbon. Ada dua. So boleh lah letak nama etanol. Ni lah kalau ada satu tak boleh lah. Kalau dia directly attach kena terus lah. Okay. okay. So ni akan jadi the parent etanol. This gonna be the final and remember we have carbon number one here sebab number ini starts from here. Sebab tu nama dia one final etanol. Ataupun common name dia adalah acetophenol. Phenol and ketone jadi phenol, acetyl group. So acetyl phenol. Okay, this one. Okay, who's got higher priority, benzene or ketone? The benzene ring or the ketone? Ketone. Ketone. So the ketone consists of how many carbons? One. Yeah, only yeah. one. So the name should be? Methanol. Methanol. Okay, tadi saya cakap kalau untuk yang alifatik straight chain kena at least tiga. Tapi sebab sekarang ni kalau structure macam ni, dia ada je, terkepik je carbon dengan carbon. Cumanya dia akan jadi substituent. So what do we call if we have this benzene as substituent? Phenyl. Phenyl. If you got two of them? Di. Diphenyl. Kena letak number tak? Tak. Tak payah. Jadi nama dia akan jadi diphenyl methanol ataupun common name dia adalah benzophenol. Kiranya awak ada this phenol benzo. So benzophenol. Okay. Dah berapa dah the common name? Enam ada? Enam eh? Saya so, tak ingatlah saya rasa saya dah masukkan dah semua dalam note zawak tu. Okay, and then ketone pun ada higher priority other than functional group except for carboxylic acid and its derivatives and juga aldehyde. Jadi, if you happen to have this double carbon-carbon double bond and C double bond O, awak akan prioritize apa? Ketone. Ketone. Jadi, the numbering will start from the right or from the left? From the right. Right. From the right. Okay, good. Now, at carbon number four, we have double bond. Okay, the double bond, dia akan contribute kepada nama dalam parent chain awak. Instead of alkene, dia akan jadi alkene. Okay, so sekarang ni kita macam mana nak name this compound? The longest is six, so suppose dia akan jadi kalau ikut ketone? Hexanon. Hexanon, tapi kena letak tak nombor dua? Kena. Kena. Okay, tapi sekarang kita ada kat carbon number four, kita ada in kan? Yes. Ya. Yeah. 
So macam mana kita nak letak? Kalau kita let, kalau kita namakan alkin, kalau dekat carbon number four we have uh, alkin, um, double bond, carbon-carbon double bond, kita akan panggil four hexene. Okay, kalau macam ni. Four hexene then. Four hexene. Four, jap. Four hexene. Sekejap, four hexene to on. Ah, macam tu nama dia. Faham tak? Four, kan kita four hexene. Okay, tapi sekarang kita punya suffix. Four hexene dia part of the carbon chain, the parent. Okay, dia tak jadi substituent. Dia akan jadi parent lah sebab dia carbon dengan carbon. Tetapi untuk suffix belakang, kita tukar jadi on. Tapi on kita dekat carbon number two. So nama dia jadi apa tadi? Four hexene to on. Yes, four hexene to on ataupun awak boleh tulis hex two in, uh, sorry, hex four in to on. This one, kita ada uh, carbonyl dengan hydroxyl. So carbonyl will have the higher priority. The numbering will start from the left. So from the left, on the left, longest carbon chain akan jadi five carbons. So at carbon number four, we have two substituents. Okay. Up, up here is hydroxy. Bawah ni metal. So what is the name of this compound? For hydroxy, for metal. Two pentanone. Two pentanone. Yes, for hydroxy, for metal, two pentanone. Okay, last one. We have this compound of ketone. Okay, but then we have the double bond as well. Okay, so the numbering will start from the ketone. And then how do you call this compound? Cyclohexene. Cyclohexene tapi ada on kan kat belakang. Buat Cyclo. macam tadi ni. Buat macam ni. Cyclohex. Two? No. Yes. Hex two on. Ya ataupun two cyclohexene kan sebab two tu belongs to the double bond kan. Buat macam ni. Two cyclohexene. One on. Ah, uh, on je lah basically sebab dia tak boleh nombor lain lah. Okay, two cyclohexene. Oh, hexenon patutnya silap. Ni hexenon. So, ataupun boleh tulis cyclohex to enon. Macam tu. Okay, habislah untuk naming. Ada tak soalan untuk uh, naming compound? So, bezanya untuk uh, aldehyde dalam ring kita kena guna carbaldehyde. Yang lain tu awak just tukar je dekat E daripada alkin tu tukar jadi al ataupun on. Lepas tu numbering kalau ada possibility untuk buat positional isomer maksudnya gerakkan dia ke position yang lain and dapat nombor lain kena letak nombor. Uh, prioritize the suffix siapa yang akan jadi uh, the family. Uh, tu je kot untuk naming. Okay. Okay miss. Right. Now, kita uh, proceed to preparations of carbonyl compound. So, preparations of carbonyl compound from previous chapter, do you think you already seen one untuk form carbonyl compound? Chapter 5 ke? Ada tak dalam chapter 5? Daripada alkene, kita jadikan carbonyl compound. Ada tak? Yes. Ada. Okay, lagi? Ada chapter berapa lagi? Eight. Eight. Yes. Chapter six ada tak? Ada. Ada. Chapter six pun ada kan? Awak masuk yang oscillation. So benda tu baliklah kita akan guna dan awak akan jumpa balik. Dan benda ni sama je. So kita ada oscillative cleavage of alkene. Okay. So that's the five. Friedel cloth oscillations in chapter six. And oscillations of alcohol in chapter eight. Okay, jadi benda yang sama balik kita akan ulang. Ozonesis of alkene, you initially got this compound. Wah, you initially got this compound. Ozonolysis of alkene of 2 methyl 2 butene. Undergo this reaction of ozonolysis. Lepas tu, apa yang kita akan buat untuk dapatkan carbonyl compound? Kalau ozonolysis, kita kena? Cleave candy. Kita kena cleave the bond. Simply cleave ke nak kena masuk berapa lagi? Uh, simply cleave. Yes, yeah, simply cleave the bond and then insert? 
O. O. Jadi kalau kita tengok dekat carbon this one, dia ada tak hydrogen? Tak ada. Tak ada. Tak ada, dia akan jadi aldehyde ke keton? Keton. Keton. So kalau kita ikutkan, kita dapatlah keton kita kat sini. And this is the common name of acetone. Okay, kalau lagi satu, we have two carbon and then we have H in here. Are we going to get ketone as well? No. 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 Kita dapat aldehyde of, apa nama aldehyde ni kalau dalam IUPAC? Etanol. Etanol. Good. Itana. Okay, the other reactions involving oxidative cleavage of alkene adalah reactions with hot acidified cheminophore. We use the same compound here but are we going to get the same product as in ozonolysis of alkene? No. No. Untuk reactions with hot acidified cheminophore, we somehow will do something to hydrogen's presence. Just now kita just cleave and then insert O sahaja. Tak buat apa-apa pun kat hydrogen. But in here, if you have hydrogen, you are going to get something else. Something else apart from aldehyde lah. Okay, so kalau kita, steps yang sama, kita akan cleave the bond. And then if you got no hydrogen, you will get the same compound as in ozonosis of alkene which is the acetone. But then for CHCH3, since we have one hydrogen, we are going to get dapat apa? Aldehyde. Ha? Dapat aldehyde juga sama atas? Sama yang atas ke? Jawapan dia? Compound dia? Tak. Ah, tak sama. Dalam hot acidified cheminophore, dia akan buat sesuatu pada hydrogen present yang tadi kita cleave dan tinggal je tepi ni. Tapi dalam hot acidified cheminophore, bila you ada H, ada satu H dapat produk lain. Dapat ada dua H dapat produk lain. Jadi bila ada satu H, kita tak akan dapat aldehyde yang sama. Kita akan dapat CO2 and H2O. CO2 and H2O ke? Kalau ada satu H. Kita akan dapat apa? C double bond O masih ada. H tu dia akan masuk O dekat situ. Dia jadi apa? COO. Ah? Kalau dah tak ada hidrogen jadi keton. Kalau ada hidrogen satu jadi carboxylic acid. Kalau ada dua hidrogen baru dia jadi CO2 dan water. Okay kelas. Okay miss. Alright. So kena hati-hati dengan siapa dia punya reagent. Okay anda kena start, uh, start practice dah tulis reagent ni macam mana. And then in chapter 6 we learned about the electrophilic aromatic substitutions. One of them is the friedel crafts oscillations. You want to substitute the hydrogen attached to this carbon on benzene with this group of um, acyl group. Okay datang daripada siapa? Daripada acetal chloride, daripada acid chloride awak. So nanti dia akan pecahkan dekat CL dapat this carbon ion, uh, carbon ion dia akan masuk ke dalam ni. So electrophile being substituted with the presence of this uh, Lewis acid. Okay jadi kita akan ada acetophenone as our product. So this acetophenone is aldehyde or ketone? Ketone. Ketone. Okay me. Alright. Okay me. Yes. And then for oxidations of primary and secondary alcohol, tertiary tak sebab dia tak ada apa? Dia tak ada dia? Hydrogen kan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So dia hanya berlaku pada primary and secondary. Untuk primary, okay, this is your primary alcohol. What is the name of this alcohol please? Ethanol. Ethanol, okay. What's the difference between these two oxidizing agent? The strength. The strength atas adalah? Mild. Mild, Mild. bawah? Strong. Strong. So, will these two uh, sizing agent give you different product or the same product? On primary alcohol? Different. 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 Kalau primary alcohol undergo reactions with mild oxidizing agent, they will give you? Aldehyde. What is the name of aldehyde form? Etanol. Okay, good. What about primary alcohol undergo um, strong oxidizing agent? They will give you? 
Kita Kita juga Karbok silik asid Karbok silik asid Karbok silik asid Okay, karbok silik asid Nanti awak perasan tak? Bila ni min karbok silik asid in chapter 10 Awak akan belajar Dia tukar E jadi oik asid So etanoic asid Okay, and then for secondary alcohol For secondary alcohol um, Will mild oxidizing agent and strong oxidizing agent gives you different product or the same product? Same product. Same. Same product. Sebab apa? Sebab the O here got uh, the C double bond, COH here got only one hydrogen available. So, dia boleh lah secure double bond. And bila dia dah secure double bond, attached to it is both carbon. Bila both carbon attached to it, tak kisahlah mild or strong, dia tetap akan jadi product yang sama. Okay, iaitu this compound or cyclohexanone for this. Apa nama compound ni kita panggil? Your alcohol here? Hexanol. Cyclohexanol. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Habis untuk 9.3. The last part of this chapter is the chemical properties. The chemical properties comprises of reactions happening on the carbonyl compound itself. Carbonyl compound undergo reactions buat apa benda? Okay. Uh, we have three type of reactions involved. Okay, the first one is nucleophilic addition. Okay, so nucleophilic additions means nucleophile being added. Nucleophile being added. Sebelum ni pernah jumpa tak reactions involving nucleophile, nucleophilic addition? Yes. Dalam chapter? Dalam chapter berapa kita jumpa nucleophilic addition before? Reactions. Dalam chapter berapa kita jumpa nucleophilic addition? Chapter 5 ada tak nucleophilic addition? Chapter 7 miss. Chapter 7. Okay good. Chapter 7 pun yang melibatkan green yard is it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay between green yard contoh let's say lah between green yard and carbonyl compound your aldehyde or ketone who's going to be the nucleophile? The green yard or the carbonyl compound? Carbonyl. Nucleophile yang attack. Maksud addition daripada bond sikit nak jadi bond banyak. Daripada bond three electron. Siapa? Green yard. Green, green yard yang jadi nucleophile. Maksudnya dalam reactions ni pun Okay dalam reactions ni pun The green yard. Um, benda lain tu yang akan jadi Yes, the green yard. Maksudnya dalam nucleophilic addition ni kalau dalam green yard dengan carbonyl compound, green yard adalah nucleophile and the aldehyde ataupun ketone adalah the electrophile means in any of the reactions, uh, in any of the reaction pula. Dalam reaction nucleophilic addition ni kita ada beberapa nucleophile tau. Jadi electrophile kita tetap our carbonyl compound. Dia yang nanti kena attack. So siapa yang kita nak tambah adalah nucleophile yang baru nak masuk. Okay. So we have five, five reactions involved in this uh, nucleophilic addition. The first one, you want to add KCN or NACN. Okay, KCN or NACN, basically dia nak bawa CN minus. CN minus, do you still remember the nucleophile is strong or weak? CN strong. minus. Strong nucleophile. Jadi oh. uh, dia lebih kurang macam chapter tujuh tapi hari tu chapter tujuh dia buat substitution sahaja. Nucleophilic substitution guna CN minus. But since the CN minus is also a nucleophile jadi dalam this reaction dia with highly negative charge akan attack carbon down here and then break the bond up here. Last time kalau kita break the bond between carbon and O kita akan dapat apa dekat sini? Dalam chapter seven tu. Bila kita masuk CN ke sini, you break the bond, the O will become negative charge, right? Dapat O CN. Hah? Tak tunggu dulu. CN tak masuk ke O awak. CN masuk ke bawah ni. Because this is the electrophilic side. Ni, ingat tak masa kita belajar green yard? Okay, green yard yang masuk. Sekarang ni CN minus yang akan masuk. Okay, itu okay. okay. Jadi dia tak dapat OCN, dia masuk kat C. Bila dia masuk kat C, 
bond antara C dengan O satu akan pecah right? Yes. Asalnya ada dua lone pair, bila dia dah pecah satu dia akan dapat tiga lone pair. Dia indirectly jadi negative charge is it? Yes. So boleh ke dikekal sebagai negative charge sahaja? No. Tak boleh sebab tu dia ada the presence of acid catalyst here to provide the hydrogen and then bila O ambil H dapat OH. OH tapi kita ada tak masukkan nukleophile lain tadi? Ada. Ada maksudnya bila awak melibatkan any reactions dalam nucleophilic addition yang kali ni memang awak akan dapat alkohol hidroksi juga dalam awak punya compound tetapi nucleophile pun akan masuk so dia akan ada dua benda yang akan jadi okey dia bukannya hanya yang kita substitute tu je okay, akan yes. tak akan ada alright so kat sini kita akan dapatlah awak masukkan CN dekat bawah atas ni akan jadi OH. So sebab tu dia addition sebab dia tinggal semua single bond. Kalau tadi we have double bond and single bond tiga. Bila di kita add jadi empat. Okay. Four electron groups. Boleh ke kelas? Boleh miss. Okay. The second nucleophile involved maksudnya nucleophilic additions of water. Water proceed with the H plus. Maksudnya kena ada uh, acid conditions juga. Jadi bila awak masukkan H2O, H2O, OH2 akan masuk ke atas kan? Ah, masuk kat bawah ni. Bila dia masuk kat bawah, dia akan pecahkan tak bond antara C dengan O tu? Yes. Yes, dia akan pecahkan juga. Nanti dia akan dapat apa? Atas dapat OH, bawah dapat? Oh yes juga. Oh yes juga. juga. Jadi kita akan dapat diol compound, okay? Oh yes, oh yes. Alright. And then the third one, we have alcohol. Okay, this alcohol dia adalah dalam keadaan excess. Okay, tengok soalan. Kalau dia cakap in excess, maksudnya it can perform more than one reactions. Kalau dia cakap alcohol one mole of alcohol, oh, dia specify one mole. Yes. Dah kalau dia dah specify, reacted with one mole of alcohol, buat sekali sahaja. Tapi kalau dia kata, react with excess alcohol, awak akan buat dua kali. Jelas, Miss. Jelas? Okay, so here, this CH3OH, can I know whether they are strong or weak nucleophile? OH. CH3OH. Strong or weak nucleophile? Strong. Strong. Weak. This is a weak nucleophile. Bila attach to H, weak. Kalau ada metal baru dia strong. Boleh? Boleh miss. Okay. So followed by acid hydrolysis, uh, apa ni? Acid uh, catalyst ni dia akan first, dia masuk bawah, dia dapat OH atas kan? Betul. Okay, this compound is called hemiacetal. Acetal here comes from the aldehyde kan? Sebab dia dari aldehyde, so nama dia acetal. Tapi sebab on di satu sahaja OCH3 yang kita kita ganti nama dia hemiacetal half. Ni kalau dia cakap one mole of alcohol. Kalau dia cakap excess alcohol, awak kena buat dua kali. Reactkan sekali lagi. Bila react sekali lagi, awak rasa dia nak pergi mana? Dia nak pergi dekat O, dekat H atau dekat C ni? Dekat C. Dekat O, C dengan C, non-polar C dengan H, non-polar C dengan O, polar kan? Ya. Yeah. Ha, lagi senang dia masuk untuk buang dia ni. Jadi kita akan tukar dua-dua. O, C, H, H, O, C, H, H. Ini adalah syarat kalau dia cakap excess alcohol. Kalau dia kata one mole of alcohol, stop sampai hemiacetal. Kalau dia kata excess alcohol, react sekali lagi, dapatkan dua-dua O, C, H, H, beans uh, added. Jadi nama dia instead of hemi dah jadi acetal sahaja. Acetal adalah untuk aldehyde. Okey kelas? Aceto datang pada asid. Al adalah aldehyde. Acetal. Boleh? Okey. Alright. So the fourth reactions. The fourth reactions involving sodium bisulfide. Okay, sodium bisulfide dekat sini saya emphasize in A warna merah and A plus. HSO3 ialah HSO3 minus. Okay, bila dia masuk sebab dia nucleophile, again, dia akan attack dekat this electrophilic carbon. 
dan double bond ni akan terkeluar. Jadi kita akan dapat O minus. But notice here, do we have any acid catalyst present? No. No, means we are not going to form um, the OH. Kita akan form something else. Okay, jadi dekat sini kita akan masukkan dia sebagai eh kita dapat OH. Alright, oh, right, sorry, sorry. OH dapat juga tapi tak perlu pun ni sebab H datang daripada dia ni. Okay, sebab NAHSO3 dia tak ada H kat atas ni sebab dia ada H kat sini. H akan pergi naik atas jadi OH juga. Yang bawah ni kita akan masukkan SO3 minus Na plus. Kita ada ionic compound bawah ni. Ni adalah dia punya uh, nuclear file. Alright. Okay. Okay means. Last one, yes. Last one is your green yard reagent lah. Okay, green yard reagent macam kita pernah buat dalam chapter 7. Saya tak tunjuk dah. Sama sahaja. Tapi apa-apa pun kalau dia minta awak react dengan green yard reagent, tolong prepare dulu the green yard reagent by reacting with Mg with the presence of dry ether. Okay, reaction yang awak nampak dekat dalam aldehyde ni, benda yang sama berlaku pada ketone. Tukar saja kat sini CH3. So kita tengok balik. Nampak tak? Saya tukar kat sini R, right? Yes. 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 Bila awak react dengan KCN, produk yang sama, sama je. CN dengan OH, bezanya sini dia adalah R, alkyl group. So C dengan C sebab tu dapat keton. Okay. Sama sahaja. Kecuali yang ni. Yang ni sebab apa dia lain? Lain pun sikit je dekat nama. Nampak tak? Tadi hemi acetal sebab dia datang pada uh, aldehyde. Sekarang dia datang pada ketone sebab tu cat. K-E-T. Hemi ketal dengan ketal. Tapi dia punya substitution sama, uh, addition dia sama sahaja. Tadi pun sini OCH3, ni pun OCH3. Depends lah, depends awak punya compound ni macam mana. Okay? Okay miss. Sodium bisulfide pun sama dengan green yard reagent pun sama. Okay, jadi saya skip lah untuk uh, untuk ketone. Just tukar sahaja. Okay. Alright. Okay. Second reactions involve is reduction. Previously, you learned about oxidations, right? Yes. From single bond of OH to become double bond of O. Now, reductions is the opposite to the oxidations. Jadi, siapa yang undergo oxidation, dia boleh tak undergo reduction? Boleh. Boleh. Kalau dalam oxidation, primary alcohol, dia akan undergo jadi either aldehyde or carboxylic acid, right? Depending on the strength of oxidizing agent. Yes. Okay, tapi untuk aldehyde and ketone, kita tak ada mild or strong. Kita ada reducing agent yang sama sahaja. Dia punya strength sama sahaja. Tukarlah apa pun dia jadi balik benda tu. Okay, kalau yang ni uh, awak boleh ada tiga pilihan sama ada guna H2NI ataupun NABH4CH3OH ataupun LIALH4 H3O+. So cara nak hafal ni H2, ni macam Nabiha, yang ni macam Liah. Tak lah ikut lawan hafal macam tapi kena betul. NABH4 dalam metanon. Nabiha in metanol, liah in H3O+. Kat, yang kat mana ke ada nombor 1, 2 kena emphasize 1, 2. Yang tak ada 1, 2 jangan letak 1, 2. Pilih salah satu. Strength diorang sama sahaja. So these are the uh, options for your reducing agent. Okay, from aldehyde, dia boleh reduce jadi kita dapat aldehyde dari siapa? Dia reduce jadi dia tu pula. Alkohol. Alkohol mana? Memang alkohol dia dua, alkohol. Aldehyde reduce jadi alkohol apa? Siapa yang boleh undergo? Primary. Primary alcohol, good. Macam nak tahu juga kalau awak tak tahu, kalau awak tak ingat, awak tengoklah sebelah ni satu je alkohol group dia. Kalau ketone? Secondary alcohol. Secondary. Boleh tak tertiary alcohol undergo reduction? Tak. Tak boleh tak sebab boleh. kita berlaku pun oxidation. Okay. Lagi satu uh, compound yang boleh undergo reduction adalah? Carboxylic acid. Yes, carboxylic acid. So nanti dalam carboxylic acid punya chapter pun kita akan jumpa lagi reduction. Okay, last one. Type of reactions yang ketiga adalah condensations with ammonia derivative. Condensations ni sama juga, dia bukan hanya tambah dan 
uh, tolak ke substitute dia ada a few steps involved jadi kita terus je involve kata condensation reactions with ammonia derivative maksudnya you initially got NH2 maybe dari NH2 ada derivative dia NHCH3 NH ada benzene lepas tu ada CH3 macam tu pula Okay so we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 I mean derivative that you need to know Kena hafal Okay kena hafal lima-lima ni Sebab kadang-kadang dia bagi nama sahaja Seru buat reaction dengan dia tu So here we have ketone If let's say you have aldehyde pun sama Tapi saya guna contoh ketone pula Tadi saya dah tunjuk untuk aldehyde Ini now untuk ketone Kalau sini H pun tak ada masalah eh kelas Okay apa yang kita akan buat um, Let's say we first react with this primary amine. Kenapa dia primary amine? Attached to this end is only one alkyl group. So this is primary amine. Okay. Site of reactivity adalah at this O ni. Kita akan remove the O, simply insert this compound. Okay. Remove O, remove H2. Terus masukkan N. Kita akan remove water lah. Clear? Yes. Ha, kalau kita remove water, kita remove O, kita remove H2, kita akan tinggal dengan N kan? Yes. Yes. N tu nak duduk kat mana? Dekat double bond right? Yes. Ya Allah, mana sebenarnya ni? Yes. Sekejap eh. Saya cari dia ni. Hmm. Yes. Bila dia buat reaction nak remove water, dia punya product simply awak letak je N C H3. Awak rasa cukup tak N ni? Kita ada satu, dua, tiga bond. Lepas tu ada dua lone pair. Dah balance kan? One, two, three. Kan yeah. N patutnya ada tiga je kan? Ha. So awak dapatlah. Produk dia senang je awak. Condensation, you remove water, you dapat dia punya compound. This is what we call imin. This is imin. When you have C double bond, N attached to it is CH3. Only when we act with primary amin, you will get imin. And then if you react your ketone with hydrazine, you will get hydrazone. Okay, tengok dekat mana. Kita remove O, kita remove H. Nanti dapatlah double bond N. Yang paling penting ni, condensation kena dapat C double bond N ni. Lepas tu sambung je lukis benda lain. Then, if we react with this one, kita panggil dia apa ni? This is 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 4, dinitro, hydrazine. This is what we call 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. Hydrazine datang pada N2, ni part hydrazine. Attached to the hydrazine, we have uh, phenyl. On the phenyl, kita ada at carbon number 2 and 4, we have 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. So when we're acting with this 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, you will get 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone. Sama sahaja hydrazone. Sebab dia tadi daripada hydrazine. Cumanya dia ada this alkyl group. Yang ni memang tak boleh ubah high, memang ni fixed. And then this one, we call them, ni kita ada hydrazine kan? Ada dua N. Yes, miss. Bila ada hydrazine, attached to it is the phenyl. Kita panggil dia? Phenyl hydrazine. Yes, phenyl hydrazine. Ataupun aryl amin lah dia panggil. Okay, kita akan dapat Phenyl hydrazone. Sebab tadi phenyl hydrazine dapat phenyl hydrazone. Basically ini adalah group hydrazone. Okay and then last one we have this phenyl and OH who's got higher higher priority. O or N? N ke O? Higher priority in terms of its uh, functional group. O. O. Okay. O jadi Tapi kat sini sebab dia amin derivative so kita panggil dia hydroxyl amin. Bila amin memang lain sikit naming dia tak apa. Nanti kita akan tengok lain. So bila masuk dalam ni kita akan dapat oxime. Oxime is when you have C double bond O and attached to it we have OH. Dan semua side product kita adalah water sebab this is condensation reaction. Kita nak remove water. Okay boleh So kalau ini aldehyde pun sama juga. So awak kena ingat kena hafal dah macam mana nak, uh, macam mana prim, uh, primary amine, macam mana hydrazine, macam mana rupa 2, 4 dan nitrofenal hydrazine. Okay, kadang-kadang dia tak bagi. Awak yang kena keluarkan sendiri structure ni. Alright. 
Now kita ada the last reactions. The last reactions is called oxidations. Okay, oxidations kita buat macam sama lah macam alcohol. Oxidations from alcohol to become carbonyl compound. Now oxidations from carbonyl compound to undergo reactions and then do something else. Okay, um, dalam carbonyl compound kita ada aldehyde dengan ketone. Awak rasa antara aldehyde dengan ketone, dua-dua akan undergo oxidations or only one of them akan undergo oxidations? Only aldehyde. Only aldehyde. Okay, only aldehyde because ketone dah tak ada space lagi untuk dia penetrate masuk uh, oksigen. Okay, sebab sebelah-sebelah dia ada carbon. Okay, jadi kita ada aldehyde sahaja. And we know we have two types of, um, what do we call that? Um, oxidizing agent. Kita ada mild dan juga strong. But for this reaction, Okay, untuk this reactions involving carbonyl compound, still boleh juga guna PCC in CH2Cl2 akan dapat produk yang sama. But for this type of reactions, oxidation, kita akan ada sedikit penambahan. Apart from having only chemical equations, we are also going to uh, memorize the observations. But then, even though kita ada observation dalam ni, Bila awak ditanya chemical test, jangan guna oxidations of this aldehyde to become carboxylic acid. Okay. Dia tak sesuai. Dia tak diterima sebagai uh, chemical test tapi dia diterima sebagai reaction. Cuma dia bagi sikit uh, penambahan, dia bagi awak observations. Boleh kelas? Okay. Okay. Maksudnya walaupun uh, dia ada observation tapi kita tak boleh guna untuk buat chemical test. Alright, so these aldehyde undergo reactions with Na2Cr2O7 and also KMnO4, H plus and heat. So what's the difference between these two? In terms of strength, dua-dua strong kan kalau ikut kan? Yeah. Chromate. Yeah, chromate dengan permanganate. Okay, so kenapa saya pecahkan dia kepada dua? Sebab kita kena tahu yang observations when you use this chromate species, you akan dapat different observation. Kalau you start dengan permaganit, you akan dapat different observations. Sebab apa? Sebab the color of the ion itself different from one another. Okay, jadi awak kena tahulah untuk dua-dua ni. But bear in mind, kalau aldehyde undergo um, oxidation reactions by using PCC in CH2Cl2 pun akan dapat produk yang sama. Cuma dia tak ada observations. Okay, so bila you guna this dichromate uh, chromate, uh, species, kita akan ada asalnya warna orange. Lepas tu dia tukar jadi apa? Kalau dia buat carboxylic acid. Green? Green. Okay, so awak kena tahu yang the color of the chromate asalnya warna orange bila dia test Kalau ada aldehyde dalam tu, dia akan tukar jadi green and means kita akan form this carboxylic acid, okay? So this is the observations. Orange color of Cr2O7 to minus change to green. Sebab apa green? Dia jadi Cr3 plus. Okay. Permaganate, uh, what color is uh, your permaganate? Kalau ni orange, yang ni? Purple. Purple, okay. Bila dia uh, undergo reactions with KMnO4, okay. Bila aldehyde ni kita test dengan KMnO4, asalnya warna purple, dia akan turn colorless. Bila turn colorless, maksudnya ada change in terms of color. Change in terms of color, maksudnya reactions akan buat this carboxylic acid. Jadi kalau dia minta observations, purple color of KMnO4 decolorize. Dia tak tukar color lain. Dia hanya uh, intensity of the color dia tu berkurang sampai jadi colorless. Okay eh? ni bukan test eh tapi dia ada observation. So ini adalah reactions yang keempat. So kita ada nucleophilic addition, kita ada um, reductions, kita ada condensations with ammonia derivative and last one we have oxidations. Okay ada empat reactions involved. Okay now Eh, untuk ketone pula, walaupun kita react this tu but no reactions. Bila no reactions, just cakap the orange colour of these um, solutions remain unchanged. The purple colour of these solutions remain unchanged. Okay, so kita dah tahu reactions. Now kita nak um, differentiate between this compound 
and other compound ataupun between the two carbonyl compounds itself. Jadi kita ada five chemical tests that you need to know. Previously in other chapters kita belajar sikit-sikit je. Ada chapter five ada tiga, chapter six tak ada, chapter seven pun tak ada, chapter eight ada berapa? Dua. Chapter eight ada uh, dua untuk alifatik, dua untuk aromatik right? Ada empat. Now dalam chapter 9 kita ada 5. Okay, what are the five chemical tests yang kita boleh guna? Dan bear in mind dia punya uh, function semua lain-lain. Okay, the first one, the test is called Bradley's test. Okay, Bradley's test ni kita nak identify whether in your compound you have C double bond O or not. Okay, maksudnya kalau dia ada C double bond O, dia akan buat reactions. Okay, so kalau C double bond O kita tahu ada dalam carbonyl group, Carboalkoxy pun mungkin boleh juga sebab dia just nak detect the presence of C double bond O. Carboxylic acid mungkin boleh juga tapi it depends okay. It depends on the uh, conditions itself. Tapi kat sini kita specify untuk carbonyl group. Okay the second one we have tolerance test. So tolerance test is used to differentiate from aldehyde and ketone. Maksudnya aldehyde from ketone. Awak ada aldehyde, awak ada ketone. Dua-dua pun ada C double bond O. Apa yang bezakan dia? Siapa di sebelah dia? Ada hydrogen or not? Okay. Lepas tu yang ketiga, kita ada Fehling stats. Fehling's or other name is Benedict stats. Sama sahaja. Okay, they, uh, we use this test to differentiate aliphatic aldehyde from aromatic aldehyde and ketone. Ha, dia lebih spesifik. Kalau tadi aldehyde dengan ketone je. Yang ni, dia dah cakap. Memang dia nak nak bezakan alifati aldehyde sahaja. Mungkin alifati aldehyde sahaja yang akan bagi positive results. Shift test. Shift test ni to differentiate aldehyde from ketone. Lebih kurang macam tolerance test. And last one is iodoform test. Kita pernah jumpa tak iodoform test ni? Pernah. Before this kita nak detect metal apa? Metal karbonil juga ke metal lain? Carbinol. Yes. Metal carbinol sebab dia ada um, um, OH, COH. Tapi sebab dalam ni kita tak ada COH jadi dia nak detect metal juga tetapi dia datang daripada carbonyl group. Metal that attach to carbonyl group. C double bond O. Okay so these are the five chemical tests yang kita akan belajar. So let's look at it one by one. As for Brady's test, you need to know the function first. And then what are the reagent? So the reagent of Bradys adalah 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine consists of ammonia. Jadi kalau dia consists of ammonia, semalam kita ada jumpa tak any ammonia reagent? Ammonia derivative reagent. 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. Ada tak? Dalam condensation reaction semalam? Ada. Ada. Okay. So hydrazine ni basically dia dia ada dua N. Bila dia ada dua N, lepas tu one of the N dia got phenyl group. On the phenyl group kita ada nitro group dekat carbon number two and carbon number four. In methanol and sulfur acid ni is just dia punya medium untuk dissolvekan benda ni. Okay, so apa yang Bradys test ni akan buat? Kita tahu kita nak identify C double bond O in a compound. Okay, jadi bila dia kata C double bond O sahaja means both aldehyde and ketone will give positive results. Jadi kalau soalan minta awak bezakan aldehyde and ketone sesuai tak kalau kita guna Bradys test? Tak. Tak sesuai sebab both give you positive result. How are we going to differentiate between the two? Jadi mungkin kita boleh guna Bradys test ni to differentiate between alcohol and carbonyl compound maybe. Sebab alcohol tak ada C double bond O. Okay, be wise when choosing um, chemical test to be used. Okay, for example, kita ada this compound. Can I know what is the name of this compound? Three carbon. Propanon. Propanon. Okay, good. Propanon is a ketone or aldehyde? Ketone. Ketone. Okay, so ketone got C double bond O means kalau dia undergo reactions of Bradys ni, dia akan releases water. Saya dah highlight warna merah kat sini. Kita akan remove H2, kita akan remove O and then we simply insert N and H and then everything else in here. 
Okay, lepas tu awak akan dapatlah compound awak dekat sini. Okay, this is your new compound. Bila dapat je this compound, maksudnya you will get observations of orange precipitate. Okay, orange precipitate kat sini. Patutnya awak ada buat eksperimen ni. Tengoklah kalau kalau boleh, kalau dia boleh, kita boleh face to face nanti mungkinlah boleh buat dia the final uh, final experiment. Okay, bila dia dah buat double bond ni sebab itulah dia bertukar colour ni. So orange precipitate. Precipitate ni mendapan. Okay eh. So awak kena tahu observations of orange precipitate. Kalau you ada alcohol to undergo Brady's test, dia akan bagi tak orange precipitate? No. No. So awak buat buat tulis reaction tapi awak tulis bawah ni no observable change. Bila observation bagi the negative one. No orange precipitate form. Bukan no reaction. Bukan no observable change. Dia kena the opposite from the uh, test yang kita suggest. Bila test yang kita suggest, salah satu akan bagi positive result. Jadi mention about the positive result and the negative result. Okay. Next one, the Tollens test. Tollens test also called silver mirror test. Kenapa kita panggil silver mirror test? Sebab observations dia kita akan dapat silver mirror. Bila sebut mirror, dia akan reflect warna apa? Warna silver. Okay, so what is the tolerance reagent? Silver one oxide in aqueous ammonium hydroxide. Ag and OH. Lepas tu dia ada ammonia. Ag and H3. Lepas tu dia ada OH juga. Okay, so this tolerance test is used to differentiate aldehyde from ketone and to differentiate aldehyde from ketone, tolerance test will give positive results only to aldehyde. Okay, positive results only to aldehyde means kalau ketone dia akan bagi negative results. Okay, for example, you have these reactions of ethanol. Ethanol is an aldehyde or ketone? Aldehyde. Aldehyde. When reacting with Tollens reagent, this is how you write your Tollens reagent. Ag and H32 plus. The plus belongs to all this. Okay, ion. OH minus dekat sini. Lepas tu kena buat dalam uh, bracket concentrations ni. Okay, this is the Tollens reagent. Undergo Tollens reagent, will this ethanol give you positive result or negative results? Positive. Positive. Bila buat positive result, maksudnya ada compound yang kita akan buat dekat sini. So your compound will be this acetate ion, ethanoid ion. You initially got CH3, C double bond O, H. Kat sini kita akan gantikan the H with O. And the O now becomes O negative. Okay, so this is your first compound. And then the other one will be your AG. AG here, you have this uh, down downward punya arrow. Bila kita kata downward punya arrow, dia belongs to precipitate or gas? Precipitate. Precipitate. So, this is your precipitate yang awak akan form. Not really precipitate lah. Dia precipitate sometimes dia tak boleh melekat. Sometimes dia melekat. Dalam kes ni dia melekat dekat tepi test tube awak. So, the observations for positive results adalah silver mirror form. Kalau kita ada ketone, the observations dia no silver mirror formed. Okay. Next one, we have a Fehling's test. Fehling's or Benedict's test. We use this reagents of Cu2 plus complex in basic solution. Okay, dia ada Cu lah. Fehling pun sama, Benedict pun sama. Kalau awak tengok lecture note awak, dia ada bagi description sikit macam mana dia orang buat dia Fehling or Benedict. Tapi tu doesn't matter pun. Kita just tahu yang dia orang ni bawa Cu2 plus complex in basic solution. Okay, so Fehling test will give aliphatic aldehyde positive results while ketones and some other aromatic aldehyde akan dapat negative results. Only aliphatic aldehyde akan dapat positive. Bear in mind, aliphatic, dia boleh jadi cyclic structure juga. It depends. Okay, bukan semua yang dalam cyclic structure tu adalah aromatic. Recall balik apa aromaticity criteria. Okay, for example, I use exactly the same example. We have this ethanol, again aldehyde. This aldehyde is aliphatic or aromatic? Alifatik. Alifatik. Good. Lepas tu dia undergo reactions with this Fehling's uh, reagent. Dia akan dapat the same compound as in Tollens. 
And but then siapa kita punya side product kalau kita guna CU mestilah copper juga kan. Tadi AG, now kita akan dapat copper. So cara tulis dia CU2O, copper to oxide. So this copper to oxide will also give you precipitate. You initially got blue color of this copper to complex, copper to plus complex and it will become orange precipitate in here. Not really orange lah, brick red precipitate. Kalau tengok dekat-dekat, precipitate dia tu warna brick red. Yang ni mungkin warna orange yang bawah-bawah ni. Okay, oh, yang ni sorry. This one. Okay, jadi observations kita adalah brick red precipitate form. Kalau dia bagi ketone, kat sini tulis no observable change, observations, no brick red precipitate form. Okay, boleh lagi? Okay, dah berapa dah? Uh, dah berapa ni kita punya? Tiga. Tiga lah. Okay, yang keempat, shift stats. Okay, shift stats, we use reagents of aqueous solutions of fusion, NAHSO3 dan juga HCl. Okay, shift stats akan bagi aldehyde positive results while ketone and other aromatic aldehyde bagi negative result. Tapi except for propanone, mungkin dia akan bagi positive results. Okay, jadi sebab dia ada a combinations of aldehydes and some ketone yang akan bagi positive results. So this test is not a good test to differentiate between aldehyde and ketone. So most of the time kita tak gunalah shift test ni but you need to know uh, there is a test called shift yang dapatkan uh, beza antara aldehyde and ketone. Tapi sebab dia ada possibility untuk dapat ketone juga as positive result jadi kita tak guna dalam syllabus kita. So just knowing the observations kalau uh, dia bagi positive results adalah pink colorations form. Okay, pink colorations form as for the chemical equations kita tak cover. Okay, eh? so to shift reagent. Lastly, iodoform test. Iodoform test sama juga to detect the presence of metal but this time carbonyl group. So the metal carbonyl group, metal carbonyl group mesti directly attach. Means ini datang pada parent chain. Dia tak semestinya ada hydrogen, tak perlu pun. Okay, so the reagent will be the same, excess I2 dan juga your alkaline solutions. So kita simply undergo these reactions. So when we have this metal carbonyl, means we can form the acetate ion together with the iodoform. This is what we call our iodoform. So iodoform will form this light yellow precipitate. Sama je lah macam yang dalam metal carbonyl. Cuma group yang kita nak detect tu berbeza. Okay, habislah untuk chemical test.